Hello, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, thanks for the invitation. It's my great pleasure to start the second day. So yeah, so I will, um, as said, uh, I will discuss about some new results we had, first of all, with Zong Chen Chen and Elkan and Mosel, who are actually around in the workshop, which is good. And uh, we're going to be discussing actually about uh, the plan the kick model. I will revisit the details, but I'm sure many of you here know what this is about. And actually some new results that revisit the start of it. So the start of it made by Jerum basically, when he started the, by studying the metropolis process for it. And we will obtain new results actually and revisit what's going on there. And let me, okay, let me take it slow. So I will start with the motivation and what is the motivation for studying generally like this task. So the motivation lies in the study of clicks in random graphs, or large clicks in random graphs that goes back in the 70s. And basically the, the fundamental result that is uh, you know, kind of hiding behind this is a very simple second moment method application that the largest click in a G in half, so that's like there's just any distribution on n vertices with probability half. So yeah, just make sure everybody knows here what this is, right? So you have n vertices and you flip a coin for every pair. And uh, if it's with probability half, if it's here, you place it. If it's tails, you don't. And then the larger click is of size approximately two log with base 12, okay? And that's a standard thing. And this is a statement with high probability. That means with probability tending to one as n goes to infinity. I will omit this thing for the part of, for the rest of the talk of simplicity, but all the probabilistic statements are going to be like this. Okay, so that's a standard thing. Now, the interesting thing starts with asking the algorithm question, which is, if I give you a GN half, can you find such a large click? And it so turns out that actually this is a non-trivial quest. And uh, for example, like a few years later, like or around this observation, then Karp basically asked in another famous paper, like, can you find a polynomial time algorithm that can achieve this two log in base to n, or actually even solve a simpler task, which is can you beat in polynomial time like the greedy methods? So there is some some very simple greedy iterative procedures for creating such clicks, which I will not go into detail, that can achieve half the optimum. So like log with base to n. So like, can you find one plus epsilon log n clicks in polynomial time? And you know, it was it is in 76, and to this day, this is actually still open. So it's, a, it's one of the big open problems in algorithmic random graph theory. Can you find something better than just greedy? And okay, that's the story for large clicks in random graphs. Where does the Jerome Metropolis process, the analysis of Jerome the Metropolis process comes in? So Jerome, you know, like to this day, many, many people have tried to understand this phenomenon, okay? And the Jerome in 1992 basically made an attempt to understand this phenomenon, okay? And what he said is like, what I'm going to do to understand this, this phenomenon is I'm going to start with some natural Markov chains for this. And I will understand whether they could surpass and, and, or why they cannot surpass the one plus epsilon log, log n variant. And okay, so what Jerome did is, 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 a, is a natural thing. So he said, okay, so if I take a, a, a sample from Z and half, Right, that's just a uniform random graph, right? So that's a, a bunch of random edges here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a natural Markov chain where the state space is all the clicks inside here. Okay, so it's a random state space, but that doesn't matter. So it's all the clicks right here. And then what happened is I will define, you know, I will run some Markov chain on it that essentially would try to sample like with the stationary measure would be is like for any click C, I will assign mass proportional to E to the beta times the cardinalities, okay? And the idea is, you know, like that if the inverse temperature is large enough, if you sample from this, essentially you are almost optimally finding a large clip. Right, so it's a, it's a valid, it's a valid uh, sampling approximation of the problem. And, uh, and uh, okay, and then you, what type of dynamic Jerome proposed? Of course, you know, I don't want you to pass completely this, but the idea is more or less the following. You need to initialize somewhere, right? And that's non-trivial because that's a random state space. So like a, a natural thing would be, for example, to consider an empty clip expansion of the state space and start from here. But you can initialize in an arbitrary way. And then what you do is you do a, some natural density update. So like, you know, what, what is the metropolis process? Let me spell it out for you in a pictorial way. If you are at any time t at a specific click, then what you do is you sample a random vertex. And if the vertex falls outside, you check, is the union a click? If it is a click, you expand and you go there. If the union is not a click, you just stay where you are. And if you fall inside here, then you flip a coin. And with some probability to the minus beta, you delete this vertex, so you backtrack as well, and otherwise you stay where you are. So some sort of classical updates to sample from this uh, gives measure. Make sense? Right, so now what Zerum proved about this, he proved that like for all beta, even as a function of n, 
uh, like these dynamics will require super polynomial time to hit the one plus epsilon log n value. Okay, I mean perhaps no no surprise today, but like that's the result. And uh, and uh, he made the one crucial observation that created a very interesting literature. Like he observed that his result still works even if you come in the g in half and plant somewhere a huge click. Okay, so like even even if you have like you know this g in half here and like somewhere you choose k vertices. And you make them, you form them to be a clique. So you change the, the, the distribution here, right? So you add, take the union with the planet clique in, in, in K vertices. And it was a technical observation, if you want, right? So I have a proof of something, and hey, it works even if you add, like, you know, these are log n clicks, right? So that's a huge attractor. If I add, like, this huge attractor, as long as, excuse me, I forgot to say this, as long as, like, K is less than root 10. Okay? And uh, okay, so that's an interesting observation. You know that somehow these dynamics are not helped even by this massive attractor. But actually, this is also interesting if you think of it a little bit from a more statistical point of view. That like this, you can think of it as a statistical problem, right? You have a signal plus noise. And actually, if k is into the alpha where alpha is bigger than half, which is the, if you want, almost the complement regime of this, then actually even there's some super simple algorithms that can find this plan click, and in particular, a really large click, like a polynomial large clicks. So if k is less is bigger than, than root 10 in this sense, and to the alpha alpha is bigger than half, even sorting the degrees, right? So this beats the fluctuation of the degrees. So like this, this is finding the, like, like, like very easily, like it's a trivial algorithmic regime, if you want, if k is into the alpha alpha. Okay, and this this created uh, you know potentially this or other things, you know, uh, like uh, it's like from the literature it seems that created attraction about this model of like you know okay this seems like to be an interesting model per se. And the people basically study this, and that's what we're going to study today. Like this plan click model, of course, I have it here formally, but yeah, probably you understand already like what's happening, right? So you are you are having you are, you what you do is you sample an endos Okay, I did this here first, you probably the first sample the click, but whatever. Like you first sample an endos and then you place on top a plan the click, you take the union, and you ask, can you recover like you know, like the hidden click? And and uh, okay, there is some monotonicity here in the sample, in the in the in the in the size of the click, the larger the click is. Naturally, it's an easier problem. So, like the question is really, it's a threshold question, right? How small k as a function of n can you actually find it? So, we do know if k is bigger than root 10, just sorting the degrees work. But, like, you know, there are obviously more questions to ask. And, you know, people have realized this and they have created all sorts of results, and there are beautiful results that many people in the audience have produced. And, but let me sort of very quickly, like, say what we know about the model. So, the first question that somebody can ask if, it's, if we see it from a statistical point of view. It's like, you know, what is the information theoretically? You know, which is the minimum case so that some algorithm works. And it takes a moment to realize that this is actually the maximum click size in the endos part. So if K is like less than this two log base to N, you know, there is the randomness here creates another click of this size and you can prove it uh, makes it impossible. And if K is bigger than this two log base to N, actually a quasi polynomial time exhaustive search type of method can actually find. So like this is the information theoretically, limit, and like, there is no exponential time situation here. It's a only two quasi poly situation. And then, but then you can ask, okay, what about polynomial time methods? And uh, actually, we are a little bit better than this uh, complement n to the alpha, where alpha is bigger than half regime. But you know, we're not like much, much better at the moment. So we can do all the way to constant root n. So as long as the click is constant root n, there are some beautiful algorithms like spectral, approximate measures, passing methods, and many others that can do this. But here, that's where we are. And uh, of course, you know, there's the in-between regime that there gets a lot of traction, which is like, you know, what is happening? Like, you know, why, why we cannot like do something better that I like to put this uh, silly image here. But like, you know, the, the point is that like, you know, what happens with uh, if K is less than 10 and people believe it's hard, okay? Like, there's like, I think some more or less belief for, for many people that this is a fundamentally hard regime or that it's just a conjecture. And, uh, and of course, if there is a belief, you know, there is some evidence usually about it. And, you know, what's the usual evidence that people use about it is that the, the very first evidence that people usually cite is this Metropolis process failure I described to you, right? So there is a Metropolis process of zero, which is a natural family of Markov chains, actually of stationary distributions and arbitrary kind of local chains that sample from it, that like, you know, takes super polynomial time to find even in one plus epsilon log and click, right? Let alone find the plant and click in this regime. And of course, you know, at the moment, you know, like uh, in this decade, we also know a sum of squares hierarchy load bounds, statistical query methods load bounds, and so on. 
And of course, let me say that this hardness thing has been used as a cryptographic primitive, as a start of average case reduction. So it's well believed among some people as, an, as a hardness assumption. What we do in this work, we decide for reasons I'm going to explain, to actually revisit the first evidence. So revisit, produce some results and revisit this very first evidence. And, uh, and uh, you may be thinking, why? <laughs> you know, why do we care like, to revisit like, the first evidence of the, of the, of the general metropolis? Because everything seems to be making sense, right? So like the thing, I hope it will become apparent if we actually see the result. So if you see the result that Zeno proved, it will hopefully become apparent why you want to revisit this, this first evidence. And let, let's see what's the mathematical statement. Okay, so the mathematical statement is as follows. Um, so Zeno proved the following thing. Okay, so Zeno proved the following thing that like it's almost what you probably are expecting. So if K is n to the alpha where alpha is less than half, and arbitrary beta, beta n and epsilon, there exists some initialization of the chain somewhere here in the state space where it will take quasi polynomial time, basically. So he has the quasi polynomial time uh, lower bound to reach a click of size one plus epsilon log n. Okay. So this is almost what you probably, so, so if you belong in this, uh, you know, you have produced this lower bounds, obviously you'll be like, that's maybe exactly what you were expecting. But if you are a little bit more stranger to this lower bounds, you may be like doubting why there is a worst case initialization here, right? I mean, uh, like we're producing a lower bound, right? I can initialize in any way I want. Like, why do, why do you tell me there's a worst case initialization here? And that's a tech, unfortunately, a technique. So it's a technical issue, which is a big problem. Like, but, but, this, is, but this is the result, okay? Now, uh, you know, I want to describe a little bit the technique because we need this for the, so what, what is the technique and why it's producing such results, uh, which is, you know, it's of course very interesting, but also have like the caveats. So the technique is, is, is relatively standard. So like, you know, if you have some Markov chain and that's your state space, for example, here we have like the planted click and a bunch of other clicks. Right, the idea is like, you know, how you prove such hitting time lower bounds is that like you, you split your space into two parts and you search for bottlenecks, right? So you, spl you split your state space into two parts, A and A complement, that have essentially two properties, okay? So the two properties are that the A complement contain all the interesting clicks. So like in this case, all the one plus epsilon log n clicks, okay? And secondly, that, that the boundary is very small. The boundary in the stationary mass point of view is much smaller. Than the, the clicks in the boundary has much smaller mass, sorry, boundary, I mean the in-between, than they. And uh, okay, and what I mean by this, yeah, because this is somewhat vague, I mean exactly this. That like the stationary mass at the clicks on the boundary as opposed to the stationary mass of A is like quasi polynomially small. If you prove this thing, then immediately you can conclude, like actually with a very specific initialization, if you initialize x0 from here, then, then uh, but not from here arbitrarily, from the stationary mass condition on bit here, then the probability at any fixed time t to be in the boundary, if you initialize from here, is actually equal essentially to this. So it's also quasi polynomial small. So if you take a union, a union bound over quasi-polynomial times, you obviously understand that you, if you start from here, you will not hit the boundary in quasi-polynomial time, in less than quasi-polynomial time, and therefore you never cross the boundary to go to the interesting clicks. Make sense? And that's, but, but you see the very specific initialization, right? So it's a very specific initialization that essentially puts you into stationarity or almost stationarity immediately. Okay, and... Uh, um, well, maybe, yeah, maybe I need to explain this. And of course, but do not, you know, this is a classic technique, but let me say also that like Jerome used it, I think in a very interesting and elegant way. Like uh, Jerome, what, what he did is he took this technique and found a very interesting bottleneck. Okay, and uh, so what, what, what he did is he said, okay, so uh, how did he produce this result? So it's easier to understand it if there is no plan to click because this is still interesting, right? The one perception of log and click. So in this case, you know, how does the click space looks like? So there's the empty click somewhere here. Like, you know, most of the mass is around log n size, right? So this is the, the cardinality. And then there is this maximum two log n clip. Right, so you need to cut somewhere here, right? To have all the one plus epsilon log n clicks to be on the one side. Yeah. You, you do not see? They don't see for sure, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I, will, I will try. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Okay, so I will, I will, I will stretch, okay. So, so, so the, the click space I'm saying looks like this. So, right, so it's, uh, it looks like this, right? So you need to cut somewhere here, but then, I mean, what Zerum did, it's cut somewhere here, but in a very interesting way. 
He cut here in a way that like the boundary is actually equal. Okay, I mean, I'm going to cheat here a little bit, but intuitively it's the same thing. The boundary is equal to this one plus epsilon over two log n clicks that are expandable. And I will explain what it means to n one plus epsilon log n clicks. Okay, so what does this mean? Is that these are clicks that are proper subsets of, one, of an even larger click. So they're already large and they can be even large, become even larger. So they're not maximal. And this is very rare, right? And also you can convince yourself that your dynamics, if they start from the empty click to hit and one plus epsilon log and click, they should pass through such a click, right? They should pass through this non-maximal and this is very rare. And then he computed this ratio and correctly concluded that this is quasi polynomial small if k is zero. And then what he noticed is essentially the same technique works as long as k is less than root n. So that's more or less the idea. Now we're going to revisit this more, but, but let me tell you like some issues that like, you know, the result as a result has. So the, the, the first obvious thing that I've mentioned is the worst case failure, right? So like, you know, how could we trust that lower bound where the failure is like in a worst case initialization? And, uh, and that's a, just a general problem that we have in this community. It's a big mathematical problem to solve, like, you know, how to actually produce like from more natural initializations, uh, lower bounds. And Jerome basically asked, asked in the conclusion also in his paper, like, can you prove a failure, for example, from an empty click initialization somehow? And also there's another thing I've been kind of not saying, but like uh, it's big out there on this, which is what's going on above root 10. So like, okay, so above root 10, um, trivial algorithms work. And I mean, trivial in the regime alpha is bigger than half, okay? So like, you know, this is just sorting the degrees work. So like, is this Metropolis process also working? It's definitely assumed to be working, right? So it's cited as the first evidence of hardness for the plant model. So it is, it is definitely in many papers, it's, it's, it's cited like it should be working. Otherwise, why do we care about this algorithm, right? In the first place. But actually there's another big problem in Markov chain theory. Like we do not, we do not know how to prove basically positive results for such an area. Or like it's a very, do not know how to prove is a very generic statement, but like, we are struggling on proving such results for, for such Markov chains. And, uh, and uh, basically, um, it's interesting to see that actually Jerome, his conclusion, even if this is widely cited as evidence for hardness, right? So somehow it's widely believed that this works above root 10, as otherwise how it's an evidence for hardness. Jerome actually in his conclusion was more conservative. So he's basically was saying that like, it could fail. Okay, it could fail. But like in case it fails, since just sorting the degrees work, it will just mean a severe drawback of using such Markov chains, right? For like such tasks. And uh, yeah, and another hint is that like, of, like uh, you know, this is a well-known question, but personally I got interested over the last years because of some results that were kind of hinting that it may fail. So like uh, we had a result with David in 2019 that we analyzed some other Markov chains. And we saw actually bottlenecks all the way to much higher than root 10. And also some physicists, uh, actually Chiara Angelinital, actually did simulations after this paper uh, with David and, and they, they saw that a different threshold behavior away from root 10 in the simulation of the germ process. So, you know, it kind of hinted that like, you know, there is a problem and uh, we wanted to revisit this. So we did revisit this. To produce the following result, we basically understood that the Metropolis process actually fails well beyond root 10. And it fails on the way to almost linear sizes for the plant clip which is, uh, okay, that's more or less the message. Let me explain what's the issue, okay? So we prove that the Metropolis process takes quasi polynomial time to recover the plant click. Uh, okay, let's make this more explicit. If you allow me to do worst case initialization, like it's classically done, right? As I was explaining, then we can prove it for any K n to the alpha where alpha is less than one. This is not a typo, right? So like all the way to like where it's kind of the whole graph, if you want a fraction of the graph and any beta positive. So we, this is the same as Jerome result if you want, but like with, uh, with half became one and a little bit more what I'm going to explain. So that's the first result. And the second result is that if we also produce results for empty click initialization. So we also produce results for empty click initialization that are, have a small caveat. So they work all the way to one as well, but we had to exclude some temperatures. So that's why I have, uh, I have to, that's a technical thing we believe. We don't believe it's fundamental, but that's why I have also the both of them. Make sense? That's the, that's the result. What, what does it mean beta is not all the way to zero or above? Right. right, we have to exclude some constant again. So all the results here are actually split into many theorems. The different temperature regimes require very different treatments, like as in classical Markov chains, right? Low temperature and high temperature is different. 
like they behave differently in the Markov chains. Okay. I guess the, the main message is what I said. I mean, I have written here, like it's a, I think it's a big failure, right? Of the Metropolis process. The result. It's a big failure in the planetary model, of course, not generally. Like it's, it's, a, it's contrary, I think, to, to what I believe is the common sense prediction for this and what I read in the literature to be the common sense prediction. And definitely I believe it has been cited, right? This is not, a, this, the, this started the very beautiful literature of the planetary model, but not for the correct reason. Like the root 10 is a technicality in the, in the germ school. Uh, log, 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 log. Right, but without a factor, right? Yeah, please. Can you have any sense of, uh, I mean, this is very hard, so, right. so, but that, you know, for the best initial conditions, you still feel good? Yeah, at the moment, no, actually. So, the, I mean, we believe it could be done. We are working on such things, but uh, we definitely, yeah, no, man, the short answer is no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we believe that, like, if you initialize sufficiently inside the plan click, probably it's, it's, it's true. But, uh, you know, we haven't worked exactly on this. But yeah. I will come back to this at some point. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Sure that, uh, beta is different from the so, so, so expectation about beta large, I see, because it's gritty and will get blocked. But beta small, I think it's more tricky. Well, I mean, zero. it's not so sure, like, because this is a huge click. So, so, so actually, even uniformly sampling will get, get you inside the planet click. So it's not below root 10, where below root 10, indeed, if you uniformly sample, you're outside. So somehow it's not clear. It's not clear in these large clicks, I think. But I agree with you. What I what I would definitely give to you is that like order log n is is and where action takes place. So it's it's not it's not a trivial. We believe it's technical, but like we don't have like I, I will not I will not I don't have a good mathematical reason to explain it. So I will not be like let's say completely completely shocked if you prove me. Well, I will be, but 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 I, I do not see either way. Let's say mathematically speaking, what's happening. But but definitely it's worth exploring this uh, order log n reason. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so let me say a little bit uh, how we, we improve on, on Jerome's results. So it's not that we only can prove that you, it takes quasi polynomial time to get to one plus epsilon log n, like Jerome did. We also can prove you cannot find even epsilon log n correct vertices with the planetary click at this time scales. So it's not that you, 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 you know, it's not, you see, it's not about finding only a large click. You cannot even <laughs> enter a little bit here. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, just like some proof, very, very light proof ideas, and then I will dig more. Uh, like, obviously, here we prove new bottlenecks, right? So it's a new bottlenecks, like as opposed to Jerome's uh, bottlenecks. Sorry, in result two, um, I mean, the overlap, I mean, hidden inside the theta, you should really prove that you can't find, like, one log n overlap, right? No, no, but we can do even epsilon again overlap. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, for any epsilon, right. like, you can do epsilon again, yes. And uh, so, it, it, of course, you cannot do a one plus epsilon because of this. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we we prove new bottlenecks. Okay, so we we that is not the bottleneck I described to you. Though some of our bottlenecks are based on this idea. Like, and basically, what we leverage is another axis. So, like, um, Jerome's axis is the cardinality, right? Because that's what he cared at the time. But like here, we have a whole new axis, which is how do you dig inside the planet click? And this actually axis, if you leverage it, creates essentially new bottlenecks, and that reminds. If you are familiar with this overlap gap property for the statistical problems, and that's what you know, a strong leverage is happening based on this. And also for B, how do we go beyond bottlenecks? I mean, uh, I will dig more in the bottlenecks because these are the part uh, three, which is more intuitive. But let me just mention a little bit about beyond bottlenecks. Like um, the idea in this uh, uh, in these temperature regimes that we study is that somehow what we prove is that if you initialize from here, as long as you are sufficiently low, close, let's say, a little low log n size, then at Intuitively, until you hit the boundary size, you have mixed here. So, and that gives you enough time to essentially produce the bad initialization. So that should be that should be the intuition that somehow, if you're if you initialize low enough, you have mixed and you're basically in the bottleneck regime. So this is if you want the, the super high level idea to keep in your mind of how we actually 
do the typical initialization, the empty clean initialization. And this is, of course, requires a lot of arguments. It's a very technical part of the, of the proof. And uh, a lot of uh, birth and dead chains and a uh, and couple of arguments in one dimension are made. Okay, now I want to, to, to dig more into this because I want to actually give you a proof sense of why alpha equal half doesn't play a role and how you can do this all the way to alpha equal one, alpha less than one. Okay, so how I'm going to do this. Uh, so, okay, so I will start with uh, a mini theorem, but uh, it's, a, it's a hopefully enough to pass some intuition. So what does this mini theorem says? So the mini theorem says that like, uh, if K is into the alpha where alpha is less than one, an arbitrary beta and arbitrary epsilon, there exists some initialization, there exists a bottleneck, to reach n to the log n time, that there exists the worst case initialization for which it takes quasi polynomial time to have this epsilon log n overlap. Okay, so in this I want to give you a sufficient proof sense. Make sense? So I'm going to, I'm going to dig more into this. To see you don't need restrictions on beta. No, no, this is the worst case initializations do not need any restrictions. They're completely general, like Jerome's result. Okay. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So how do you prove such a result? Um, right, okay, so how to structure the board here? Uh, okay, so the, the idea, okay, so of course you use a bottleneck. Uh, and uh, okay, so remember what we need, right? So we need a, a, a cut or a, a partition so that A complement contains all the interesting states, which here are the, the clicks that have at least epsilon again overlap. Okay. And also we need to prove the, that, the, that the, the boundary in our choice is much smaller in stationary mass than A, right? Two conditions. So, okay, we will be less smart in this specific case, uh, you know, like in the sense of how intricate is the cut, we will be kind of the, the simplest choice. Let's take this equal, okay? So like, let's just take all clicks that have larger overlap with the planned click here. So like essentially they all overlap a little bit. Here. So, like, you know, we choose A to be clicks uh, that at, this is the complement. So, like, okay, I'm playing a little bit with the boundary, but yeah, let's say we choose this A. So, clearly, like, you know, A complement contains all these clicks and, uh, okay, whatever. And, uh, and, uh, and, the, <laughs> and then and you need to prove this thing, right? You need to prove that this thing is small, it's quasi polynomial small. Okay. Cool. So, like, how do we prove this thing? So, so we essentially prove directly this thing. That's actually true all the way to one. And uh, let's see uh, how this is done and why that's that's true. So, okay, obviously that's the, that's the measure at o equal overlap equal to r as opposed to overlap at most r. Now, I will note this is the part I will I will I will omit of how do you actually bound this, but I will give you I think an intuitive upper bound. So, for all beta, the following upper bound holds on this on this bottleneck. So what we can prove is that uh, for all, okay, I need, I need a quantity. So I need a quantity that's called WQR. Okay, what's WQR? It's a very intuitive quantity. That's the planned click uh, model, right? So like there is planned click here. Okay, I, want, I will give you a Q and an R. So this is, uh, okay, I will give you a Q and an R. I want you to count how many clicks have total size Q and overlap R, okay? So I will need this throughout the top. So it's important to understand what WQR is, okay? So like I will fall, I will get this random variable, I need this, okay? So that's accounting statistics. So if you have this WQR, then you can always prove that the bottleneck is at most the following quantity, the maximum over Q, so the maximum slice, the maximum fixed size of a click, of the ratio of the total clicks of overlap exactly R and this size, as opposed to this size and overlap at most R, okay? So hopefully that's an intuitive thing. What I'm saying is that the bottlenecks can be for any beta upper bounded by the following statistic, the following statistic, which is counts if you fix a size and you count how many clicks have exactly overlap R as opposed to less than R. And that's sort of, it's always an upper bound in this. Next one. Right, and by this way. So it's, it's just that, honestly, I think I give too much credit. It's more like, you know, you maximize over beta this quantity. It's more like it, beta larger, essentially, and the fact that it's uniform over fixed sizes is, is, is enough to get this result. But hopefully it's intuitive now, right? So it's a combinatorial problem from this point, right? To understand, you know, when, when does this, 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 essentially you can think of it like you want to penetrate in the plant click, does this become smaller, right? For a fixed size, right? Does it, you have a bottleneck in this way? 
okay, how do you bound this? Well, I mean, uh, you can lower bound. Well, a trick we do is, you know, okay, how do you actually control this thing? Okay, and uh, the denominator is overlap at most time. Maybe it's complicated. It's always lower bounded, and therefore this upper bounded by overlap zero. Right? You can always keep the overlap zero clicks. And this is good because we know everything about overlap zero clicks, right? And why do we know everything about overlap zero clicks? Because they are there those random model. And we, from the 70s, we know everything about these clicks and all the statistics about the clicks. So your hope maybe is that somehow if R is small, so you cannot hope actually for R large for such a thing. If R is small, it's epsilon log n, that somehow there is a bottleneck between R and uh, between equal R and equal zero clicks. And that's basically what we do. So what we prove is that this WQR for any k into the alpha where alpha is less than one, there is always a room where this goes down. Okay, so the count of the clicks, you fix a queue. If you have a zero overlap, you have, you know, if you are in illegitimate queues, which are below two log n, you have quasi-polynomial main clicks here. And they are quasi-polynomial factor down all the way to one minus alpha log n, and then they go up. And this gives you always enough room here to, to choose the epsilon. Okay, so actually I want to, to give you uh, the actual calculation to see actually how, if you guess that this is true, it's, it's actually an easy calculation to see how the alpha equal half doesn't play a role. So, so um, okay, so okay, probably you can see here, right? So, so, okay, what's happening, right? It's an easy calculation, at least in the first moment to see this calculation. So, so what, is the, what is the expected value of WQR, right? So expected value of WQR is just, uh, you know, I mean, remember what's WQR, right? You fix the planning click and uh, you have overlap total size Q and overlap R, right? So it's just uh, K to R, uh, N minus K, uh, Q minus R, and then the, the edges, it's R. Right, so it's a very simple expectation, right? By linear expectation. And uh, what I want to tell you is that, like, if you fix in the interesting regime, so the interesting regime is when R is, um, when R is like, let's say, epsilon log n, as I chose it, and uh, Q is order log n. That's where, like, the math, the interesting things happen in this case. And in any case, I have, uh, you know, if you do the Stirling and you trust me on this, this is a, a, an easy calculation, you will get essentially that this thing is, it behaves like this. It's the, the Q part plus. Log square. Okay, so it's like an easy calculation to do. But then if you do this calculation, I think things become apparent. Okay, so like, so, so like, look what's happening. So the number of WQR, the number of clicks of size Q and over lapar, this is the Q part, it decomposes very nice. This is the Q part, this is the fact of the size, and this is the overlap part. And, and you can see that alpha interacts with one, right? So this is the, there's no half here in this calculation. So then what happens, right? So at least in the first moment, if you have, uh, you cannot see here, if you have, if you take the ratio of WQR with, with Q with R equals zero, what happens, right? This part is in common, so it vanishes. So the only thing that left is this. So like what you are essentially left is two epsilon square over two minus epsilon one minus alpha log square n. Okay, so I don't know if you see what's happening there. So as long as epsilon is less than two one minus alpha, this is always quasi polynomial. So this is kind of done, right? So by the first form calculation. So there is no half really. I mean, if you start gaining the perspective of like checking this, I mean, by this perspective, there is there's nothing to, yeah. Okay, hopefully you see the calculation. Of course you need to do it, but there is concentration and everything, yeah. Okay, so is this part uh, sufficiently clear? There is, there is no, this, this I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't prove or I don't say here. I say for any Q, this is true. There is, there is, there is. Value of Q. Right, right, exactly. You need, you can do the calculation here. There is, there is, there is a Q that like has the, if you want the smallest gap, if you want in this sense. But I don't think that's, uh, it's, it's always gradual polynomial the gap. Yeah. Like you can, you can of course answer, yeah, which Q is the most probable to sort of dig into and stuff like this. But these are all quasi polynomial small cases. 
As well, guys, this is happening, right? Okay, so this is this part. Um, now I was thinking what to talk next, and 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 I figured that I, it's maybe good to discuss how this relates with Jerome's result. So, like Jerome's result was not about epsilon log n overlap, right? It's about finding one plus epsilon log n clicks. So maybe you, you may be thinking, okay, but maybe half is necessary for finding one plus epsilon log n clicks. And I want to convince you that this is not the case, and to, that it's actually a technical issue with Jerome's proof. Okay, so like. Um, Okay, so I will prove this also mini theorem if you want that that uh, there exists if k is into the alpha one alpha less than one arbitrary better than arbitrary epsilon there exists a worst case initialization for which takes quasi polynomial time to find such class clicks. Okay, so this is literally improving upon the root n of the. Okay, so let's see. This will get more vague, unfortunately, because I cannot do a simple calculation like this. But hopefully, I will I will carry the idea. Okay, so the idea is, you know, the, the, the bottleneck idea is uh, maybe we need to return to the previous situation of Jerome, right? So this is not about overlap, at least superficially. It's about about finding a large click. Uh, so the right. So Jerome, what he said is, you know, if you remember, so let's revisit the argument in a slightly more detail. So the argument of Jerome was that like if k equals zero. Then you know the the clicks look like this. And he cut somewhere here, right? So that the boundary is is this expandable one plus epsilon over two log n clicks. Okay, so but what what he actually proved with this? Okay, expandable hopefully made sense before. This is non-maximal already super good in energy clicks. So so like this, this is uh, what we can prove. Is what he sorry what he proved is that the the bottleneck here, like we did before, is always bounded by the maximum ratio I told you before. What he proved is a similar inequality. He proved that for any beta, this thing is always upper bounded by the ratio of the number of one plus epsilon over two log n clicks which are expandable divided by the number of one plus epsilon over two log n clicks. Right, that's an inequality he essentially proved. That somehow always this bottleneck is upper bounded by the ratio of essentially the expandable clicks in the one perception over two log n space. Okay, and that's in k equals zero. But now, you know, you can think of it also because it would be helpful as like you fix the z, you fix the instance of z in half, and you ask what's the probability if I choose a, 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 a one perception log n click at random to be expandable. Okay, that's like obviously similar things. And then he proved that this is n to the minus omega log n. Okay. Now, the, the thing is that, like, he noticed that his proof carries through all the way to root 10. And what was the idea? The idea is simple, actually. The idea behind his generalization is that if you have, if, if you have a planted click below root 10, then if you sample uniformly at random and one plus epsilon over two log n click, I mean, from the graph, from the instance, it will fall outside the planted click. And that's what does this mean, right? That means that the majority of one plus epsilon over two log n clicks have nothing to do with the planted click. It's like k equals zero. So any statistical estimate you have on them remains true. So like the, the, the proof works. Makes sense. So like that, that's the idea of Jerome. That somehow, since the majority of them are outside, this is Erdos ready. So like, why do I care if this is below ten or above or, or zero? Like uh, the statistical estimates of being expandable, false. Right. So, so, so essentially, right. So, hopefully, you you understood this this trick. And 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 then the idea is that like this fails actually above root n. So, like if you choose at random and one plus epsilon over two log n click, it falls inside here if you are above root n. So, like there is actually the probability of being expandable itself is 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 constant, right? Because you are inside the planned click. So, like this 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 argument fails. But we remedy this, so we we we, we found a way to, to 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 let's say use it and actually make a proof all the way to one. And the idea is to use the overlap actually. So like I told you before that, right? So like uh, okay. So I told you before that like let's say make a little bit bigger because we're above root n. Okay. So I told you before that that uh, uh, maybe let me say let me say the statement and explain. Okay, so what holds is the following, the following conditional version of this random one plus epsilon over two log n click. If alpha is less than one, not half, 
Then if you choose at random and one plus epsilon over two log n click here, yes, it will fall inside here. But what if you restrict the overlap to not be too large with the planned click? If you restrict the overlap of this chosen at random one plus epsilon log n click to be less than this R star, this, this thing that goes down, the monotonicity, then you are actually outside the planned click. So, so okay, we can prove, yes, if completely at random, you are inside. But if you choose with a little bit, you allow yourself a little bit of overlap here of planned click, let's say touching here, then you are actually outside. And this is actually following exactly because of the non-monotonicity, right? So I told you that the WQR discounting statistics like always fall until, until one minus alpha log n and then go down, right? And that's exactly the same statement. For Q1 plus epsilon over two log n, what I'm saying is you have zero overlap, you dominate in cardinality the ones that have one minus alpha log n overlap. But then of course, if you have higher overlap, you know, this becomes more and more probable that you are inside the plant click. But there is a small room here that you can use. Okay, so let me, let me reiterate what I'm saying. I'm saying, because this may be a little bit complicated. It's, I'm saying that like, if you choose constraint on touching only a few vertices here, with high probability, you have zero. You don't touch zero. And that makes essentially this, this ratio plus the condition that the overlap is small, to be still true all the way to one, to one end to the 0 0.99. Sorry, maybe it's not epsilon here. It's one minus alpha. Because you know, like uh, let me explain again what's happening. Conditional on having low overlap, you are outside of the planned click. And outside of the planned click, Jerome's estimate says you're not expandable. So like all in all, what I'm saying is that that means that, that on the space where if you don't touch a lot of the planned click, there is a bottleneck to reach one plus epsilon log n size. Okay, so what I'm saying is if you don't touch the planned click, you are not going to find one plus epsilon log n clicks if you don't touch enough the planned click. But remember that we, from the previous theorem, we have a bottleneck in actually achieving such large overlap. So you have a bottleneck in two directions. So you have a bottleneck in achieving large overlap. And conditional on not achieving the large overlap, you have a bottleneck in achieving large size. So essentially, by combining the two, you can create a new bottleneck. Okay, so like this is a little bit complicated idea, but hopefully it makes some sense. Right, what I'm saying is that if, if this is the cardinality and that's the overlap, always from before there is a bottleneck in, in crossing the epsilon log n overlap. And then conditional on that you're below this line, you have a bottleneck in achieving one plus epsilon log n size. So by essentially constructing something with this boundary, you can commit in big quasi polynomial time always inside here. Okay. So basically, I mean, of course, I don't tell you how to create this bottleneck, but that's another technical thing. Right. So, and you can, you can find a special bottleneck that gives the result that like, you know, it's conditional on the space of low overlap, but like you can condition there before the example. Okay. So the, uh, right, so I was thinking of wrapping up here. I don't know if I have time to tell you a little bit about the beyond bottlenecks. I have one slide for this, but if I don't, I can just conclude then. Uh, I think I have a conceptual question. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so I mean here, I mean, I guess there's another question, which is, do you think that there is a Markov chain that achieves the blue down? Right. I mean, it's not so clear that it should be this Markov chain. I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I understood it correctly, you know, the bottleneck is really in the space of cliques. Right. But, you know, once I look at Markov chains that allow me with some penalty, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're non cliques. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 and, you know, partially right. like, uh, you know, part of the reason why like SOS lower bound makes sense is because they encode a lot of other algorithms as special cases, like special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think already like there's some parallels here that, you know, there are other situations where, um, we know that uh, Markov chain or Langevin types of things don't encode the most powerful spectral algorithms. Yeah, well, I was going to talk about this a bit. Yeah, yeah. With the Kikuchi hierarchy. Right. So partially, you know, the Markov chain things are always a, a tough element to put in the space of models that we have lower bounds for because changing the Markov chain doesn't have any, you know, rhyme or reason to uh, yeah. what happens to the performance. So I'm kind of wondering, 
what do you bet is the answer. Like, right, right, right. Be a Markov chain so first of all, like let me say I completely agree with your comment. That like that like the Markov chains are kind of excluding from this kind of low degree, let's say, situation, and that's why they have their own interest. Uh, my bet is first. It's 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 uh, is that the answer is yes. Like you could achieve the root n. And actually, in this paper we had with David, we were operating on dense subgraphs to allow the yeah. being outside of the clique. And actually, we used some lifting slash over parameterization idea to at least say that the bottleneck we studied at the time was vanishing, like with this trick. So, like I bet, but it's by no means a theorem that there is mark of chains which are natural and you can define. That cannot save this uh, this root input. Because thing. also, but, like you know, here there's this mixing of like you know the spectral algorithm also provides a, a certification that there's right. no large leak. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And somehow the the Markov chain you're describing here is really for the search problem Absolutely. because it's yeah. in the space of cliques. But it seems like you know if there is one, it has to operate with like effective cliques. And right. So right. Right. No, absolutely. I agree. I agree. No, by no means I I, I wanted to. To, I, will, I, was, I wanted to comment in, this, in the conclusion about this. By no means I, was, I meant to say something about the Markov chain as an evidence, like to, to say that like Markov chains, you know, should or should not be used as evidence of hardness. I just want to say there should be caution about yeah. about this, right? That's that's right. what I'm trying. I, mean, to I was say. struck by Jerome's very strong statement about indictment. That's a, that's a, like, like right, that's right, a right. I mean, this. I mean, probably he was talking about this specific metropolis process, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not that uh, he wanted. Uh, he was going for the general thing. Maybe you can cheat and create some almost the fake mark of chain around the greedy algorithm about well, sort of that. Right? Because um, you gotta just create central. Huh? Like, you know, you just have to you put got spectral it. in the thing. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm less, uh, less ambitious. Uh, if uh, alpha is bigger than half, uh -huh. then there's a greedy algorithm, real greedy algorithm. Yeah, yeah. You mean the degree? You mean the degree? Yeah. The degree. degree, yeah. 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 Actually, it's not even any, any algorithm. Right, right. If exactly. you think of it like this. That's what we have. Yeah. Thank, thank you for explaining that. This is true. No, exactly. Yeah, it's hard to define even local because it's a dense graph. So what will mean to be local also? So it's a little bit complicated, the, the question. Yeah, so what do I do? Shall I wrap this up? And, uh... I'm not that. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now maybe wrap this up. And if you have any question about the beyond bottlenecks, I do have one slide that I can, but I will need like uh, three, four minutes to go about. So like up to you, or we can talk offline. But yeah, so maybe let me uh, conclude. Um, Right, I like to think about this result in terms of a higher, a little bit algorithmic picture, actually. So, like, uh, there is a there is an algorithm that actually, if you give me any graph, like by Yuri Fege, that says if you give me any graph, worst case graph, with the promise that it has an n over polylog n click, then there is a polynomial time algorithm that can always find a polylog n click inside the graph, right? So, like, you know, this is a statement that's very interesting, and but it's a worst case, you know, like classical algorithm. Does polylog mean bigger than log n? Right, right. There are some constant exponents here I'm missing that. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Does it mean bigger than log n? Or like it's bigger than log n. Oh, okay. But I mean, it, it's a function of this polylog n. So I wouldn't try to make such a statement. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the point is that like what we prove, I think it's interesting in this case, right? Because it says that like even if you randomize the outside instead of worst case, I mean, admittedly, with the planet click almost there, so we cannot achieve n over polynomial again. In, 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 we cannot match the, the exponents here, but like almost there. And actually, the metropolis process still finds a polynomial again, click, right? So it's kind of an interesting uh, high-level worst case versus average case situation. But I think it's a, it's a big failure of this metropolis process, right? So just to get a, a little bit of a higher level in algorithm in algorithms about this. And right, so my message, as I said, is like, I think that the, I think the message of this work is we need to be careful about the MCMC failure. Like, I mean, it's, a, it's a, you know, it really started, for example, a beautiful literature. So it's, a, you know, by all means, we should study such things. But like, we should be careful, right? Because first of all, we do lack positive results. And, and this should be a direction we should be working on, at least if we want to trust such lower bounds. I mean, to understand that there is a couple of positive results also. And also, like, you know, it's important also to go beyond the worst case initialization. You know, we, not that we have a big counter example about the worst case versus typical initialization situation, but uh, still. And uh, also about a comment that Ankur made also is like, it's a, it seems to me that like with this plan the click story, that at least for some local search algorithms, like we see underperformance. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, this is something we do know also in this another model, tensor principle component analysis, where like Langevin require 
like a much higher signal to noise ratio, I think it would be interesting to understand how generic is this and to quantify it in some way and to, to understand when there is a local, you know, to computational gap or not. And yeah, I will conclude here. Thank you very much.